Welcome to the ADP mobile app training. Today we will review some general functions of the ADP mobile app, such as how to clock in, how to view your time card, and how to request time off. So let's get started. When you click on the app, you will have to enter your user ID and password. I'll start by entering my user ID and selecting next. Then I'll enter my password and select sign in. Once you have successfully signed in, you will see the home page where you can access the different features available to you. The first one you'll see is the clock. If you're an hourly driver, then you will have this option to punch in and out using the mobile app. If you're a salary driver, you will not see this option. Right below, you can select review pay statement to view your most recent pay stub. If you scroll down further under recommended, you'll see different options such as pay, time card, time off. You'll see the clock here too, which will be the same as the one at the top. And the last two are benefits and policies. If you scroll down further under status, you get another snapshot of your last pay stub and also any pending time off requests. Lastly, under the things to know, you can get more information on Wisely Banking or you can fill out a survey and provide feedback of your mobile experience to ADP. So let's go all the way back to the top and let's first explore the clock option. On this screen, you'll see the different options to record your in and out punches. You'll see start shift, meal punch, end shift, and start shift with transfer. This last option is only for employees that regularly transfer to different departments throughout the day. So to start my day, I will select Start Shift. And once you see that the circle has changed from gray to green, you'll know that your punch was successfully recorded. You can also select where it says Recent Punches. And this will show you your recent punches for the last two days. To request time off, you will select the time off option under the recommended list. You will then be able to see your balances as of today's date. For this example, I showed 20 hours of sick time and 17.83 hours of vacation. To submit a new request, select request time off. Then select the request type, it can be sick, unpaid time off, or vacation. I will be using vacation. For start date, I will select April 27th. The end date will automatically populate to the same day, so if you need to update, you can select the calendar icon and update your end date. Start time, I will leave it as 8 a.m. for this example, but you can update it depending on your schedule. Hours per day, I will leave it as 8. You also have the option to add a comment, and this will provide more information for your supervisor. If I would like to submit another request, I can do so by selecting add another request. This will submit them both at the same time. So now I will select review and submit. I will review that my information is correct. And then I will submit request. Okay, so now status of the request shows completed and pending and I can select close 
and it will take me back to the time off screen. On this screen, you also have the option of viewing previous time off requests. So you can select view time off requests and this will show you any pending time off requests you have. Um, so you'll see that the vacation request that I just submitted is towards the bottom. You can also update the filter by selecting on the drop down menu at the top. You can select approved, canceled, and rejected requests and view through the history of your requests. Okay, so let's go back back all the way to the home screen, and that is how you submit time off requests. One thing to keep in mind with time off requests is that once they've been submitted, you can no longer edit or update the request. So if you realize that you made a mistake or that you need to cancel the request, you go back into time off, select view time off requests, Find the request that you need to cancel and select cancel time off. You can add a comment as to why you're canceling the request or you can select yes cancel. Okay, now that that's been canceled, you can resubmit your request with the correct information and the canceled request will no longer show under pending. How to view your time card. On the home screen, under recommended, select time card. Here, you'll see your time card for the current pay period, but you do have the option to change it if you click on the dropdown. You can change it to previous pay period or select a specific range of dates. Towards the top, you'll also see the pay period summary, which shows the current pay period dates, the total hours worked, and if you have any errors flagged. Now, before you get too alarmed, these errors, also known as exceptions, can be caused by several different reasons. Those of which include starting your shift earlier or later than scheduled, having a missed punch, or having a meal penalty. To view those exceptions, you can scroll down to your time card and select the day that shows a small red flag, meaning there's an error. If you select it, it will show you the reason for that exception. This employee, for example, was scheduled to come in at 8.30, but they punched in at 7.59 a.m. So this causes an early in exception. You can also expand the pay code summary and weekly summary to view your total hours worked by pay code and by week. Right underneath, you can turn on the option to show time off. This will add any pending or approved time off requests that are within the current pay period. You'll also notice the option to approve your time card. However, this is only for employees that are required to approve their time card. If you're not sure whether you're required to approve, please reach out to your supervisor and they can confirm.